Ever felt your phone vibrate on the table, only to realize it wasn't your phone? The glass rattles, the floor hums, and for a brief second, you wonder if the earth itself just twitched. But while we feel the chaos, somewhere deep inside a metal case, a machine doesn't just feel the quake, it remembers it. It draws it in ink and motion, turning invisible ground tremors into a living heartbeat of the planet. So how does a simple instrument manage to capture the Earth's movement so precisely? Movements we can't even see? Let's find out. This is Seismograph, how it works, right here on History of Simple Things. Imagine the Earth as a giant drum. Every tectonic shift, volcanic burp, or human-made explosion hits the surface like a beat, but instead of echoing sound, it sends ripples, seismic waves, through the crust. Some race near the surface, others dive deep through rock layers, bouncing back and bending as they go. These waves travel faster than you think, up to eight kilometers per second, and they're invisible, intangible, yet strong enough to move mountains. Humans can't sense most of them, but the Earth vibrates all the time, every second. That's why scientists needed a way to detect these subtle shakes, not by sight or hearing, but by measurement. That's where the seismograph steps in. Here's the strange part. To record motion, a seismograph must stay perfectly still. Sounds contradictory, right? But this paradox is its secret. Picture this. A heavy metal weight called a mass hangs from a frame. That frame is bolted directly to the ground. When the Earth moves, the frame moves with it. But because of inertia, the suspended mass tends to stay put. The relative motion between the moving frame and the still mass becomes a record of the quake. It's like sitting in a car that suddenly accelerates. You feel thrown backward, not because you moved, but because the car did. The same idea powers the seismograph. The weight resists motion, and that resistance becomes a signal. Now imagine attaching a pen to that suspended weight hovering just above a rotating drum covered in paper. When the ground is calm, the pen draws a straight line as the drum spins. But when the ground shakes, the pen jerks up and down, scribbling waves instead of lines. Each spike represents a vibration, the Earth's pulse translated into ink. That wavy pattern called a seismogram tells scientists when an earthquake started how strong it was, and how far away it occurred. It's an astonishingly elegant design. No computers, no screens. Just gravity, inertia, and time keeping track of a planet's movement. The concept isn't new. The first working seismograph dates back to 132 AD, created by Chinese polymath Zhang Heng. His device didn't use ink or electronics, it used dragons, literally, a bronze urn surrounded by eight dragon heads, each holding a small metal ball. When the ground shook, one of the balls dropped into a frog's mouth below, indicating the direction of the quake. Crude? Maybe. Brilliant? Absolutely. That was the world's first attempt to listen to the Earth. Thousands of years later, the modern seismograph refined that same idea, detecting motion through balance and direction. By the late 19th century, seismographs evolved from mechanical pens to electromagnetic sensors. Instead of a pen, a coil of wire attached to the mass moved within a magnetic field. As the coil moved, it generated a small electric current. Stronger shakes made stronger signals. Those signals were amplified, recorded on photographic paper, and eventually digitized. Suddenly, scientists could detect tremors from halfway across the planet. 
the earth became a readable text, with every tremor a new line in its autobiography. But earth doesn't just shake up and down, it rolls, it twists, it lurches in all directions. So one seismograph isn't enough. Modern seismic stations use three instruments, one for vertical motion, one for north-south, and one for east-west. Together, they form a 3D map of movement. Think of it as turning the Earth shaking into coordinates, a complete symphony of motion, each wave carrying information about where it came from and what it passed through. When an earthquake hits, the seismograph records two main types of waves, P waves and S waves. P waves, or primary waves, are the fastest. They travel through solids, liquids, and gases. They're the first blip on the seismogram. S waves, or secondary waves, arrive later and only move through solids. They're slower, but more destructive. By measuring the time difference between the arrival of P and S waves, scientists can calculate how far away the quake occurred. Add data from at least three different stations, and the exact epicenter can be pinpointed, the same way your phone triangulates your location from cell towers. Even when the ground seems still, seismographs keep writing. They detect the faint tremors from ocean waves, volcanic rumblings, or even passing trucks. Scientists call this seismic noise. It's not useless, far from it. That background noise helps researchers monitor how the planet's crust flexes and how human activity changes its vibration. Some stations even pick up the impact of meteors or the echo of nuclear tests. The Earth is never truly silent. Only our senses are. Creating a precise seismograph isn't as simple as bolting a mass to the floor. Every vibration, footsteps, cars, wind, can distort readings. That's why most seismographs live underground shielded in vaults where temperature and humidity stay constant. Some are even buried inside mountains, sealed in vacuum chambers to prevent interference. When the 2011 Tohoku earthquake struck Japan, hundreds of seismographs recorded it in real time. The data formed a map so detailed it revealed how the shock waves bounced through the planet's layers. Even seismographs in Europe felt it faintly. These records aren't just for studying destruction. They help engineers design safer buildings, predict aftershocks, and understand how continents move. In every jagged line of a seismogram lies a clue about the Earth's anatomy. Modern seismographs are getting smarter. Fiber optic cables, the same ones that carry your internet, can now detect seismic vibrations along their length. That means undersea communication lines could double as global earthquake sensors, covering parts of the ocean we've never monitored before. AI systems can now read seismograms faster than humans, detecting patterns that predict aftershocks or volcanic eruptions. The seismograph's pen may be gone, but its purpose has never been clearer – to listen, record, and warn. So next time you feel the floor tremble, remember, somewhere, a quiet machine just caught the Earth signing its name. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.